So tonight I'm going to give everybody a little bit of a, a feeling for the, the journey of discovery of astronomy, so where astronomy has started and where it's evolved to, some of the amazing things that it's found along the way of that journey, but then looking at the big next step, the big steps of discovery that have come with new generation telescopes like the SKA. The SKA is going to be the world's largest astronomical facility. It's going to be a new generation of radio telescope, 10,000 times bigger than anything ever built before for science. So it's an amazing step into the unknown, into the discovery of the universe. It'll push us back to that time in the universe when the very, very first objects were being formed. So it's an extremely exciting time to be a scientist. Many dishes, because it's, they're easier to build than one large one, it can be cheaper and easier to build small ones than one big one, but also if you've got lots of little ones, you can actually spread them out across not just a kilometre by a kilometre, but actually 3,000 kilometres. The more you spread out radio dishes, the higher the fidelity, the higher the resolution of the image that you make. So as well as having a, a collecting area of equivalent of one square kilometre, you've also got this enormous extent, 3,000 kilometres, that gives you incredibly high resolution in your pictures as well. The SKA is something which is going to capture the imagination of everybody, not just astronomers, but young people because of astronomy and the things it'll discover, engineers because of the incredible challenges that it's going to produce in terms of building the SKA, computer scientists because it's going to be the world's biggest computer science project, fiber optics networking people, command and control people, all sorts of engineering and technical skills are going to be called upon to build the SKA. And in many cases, particularly in this computer science world, it's going to be the biggest project in the world, the world's largest computer system, the world's largest data archives. These are all going to be part of the SKA. So it's not just, not just science, it's also the technology. And with great technology, with demanding technology, comes innovation and comes discovery. The last time one of these big projects was going on, like the Large Hadron Collider in, in Geneva, that project as a byproduct invented the web. Right, so the web is a pretty amazing uh, part of our lives today, and so we can imagine the sorts of things that will come from the SKA project. I think that we, the SKA has been designed to answer a number of really interesting questions about the universe, but the most exciting thing for me is the things that we don't know, the things that we will see happen as part of the SKA being there, the serendipity, if you like, the, the discoveries that are made, which the capacity and the potential of the SKA is enormous. As I said, 10,000 times more capacity to discover than any telescope we've had before. I think it's important that we build the SKA in the place where it can do the job it's designed to do. It has to be in the place where it can do the science, it can produce the results that it is designed to do. In my mind, that is Australia. In Australia, we have the world's most radio acquired site. We have a country which is exactly the right size to fit the SKA to do the kinds of science that it needs to do. Uh, we have the conditions, the conditions are right. And Australia wants to make a home here in Australia for the world. This is a world telescope. It's not about Australia and South Africa. It's about the world. There are 20 countries who want to build SKA. We would like to give to the world our site, provide a home for the SKA and be the home base for radio astronomy for the foreseeable future.